Sri Surabhyay Namaha. I'd like to begin by, of course, thanking the organizers for this wonderful event and uh, especially <clears throat> like to welcome devotees who have come from quite far. Uh, we have devotees who have flown from Hawaii, from Canada, from India also to attend this uh, very unique conference. <clears throat> The name of the conference should indicate something more than just looking after cows. We have coined this title, Cow Culture, in order to <clears throat> underline the importance and absolute necessity of the most ancient culture, we could say original culture and eternal culture that all of us belong to, whether in India, Canada, US, or any other place in the world. And one of the central themes of this culture is very much related to the concept and principle of dharma. Before I came to Krishna consciousness, like so many of us from the West, being from Canada, for the first 25 years of my life, I had never even heard the word Krishna. That's how disconnected most of us outside of India have been. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, the founder Charya of our ISKCON society, presented the whole ideology of dharma in such a way that we could easily <laughs> that we could easily capture and understand the essence of religiosity. The essence of religiosity being common actually to everyone. And the basis of that concept of religiosity that we call dharma, that we call actually sanatan dharma, begins with the proper understanding of cows. Wonderful explanations and purports are given by various acharyas, and especially by Srila Prabhupada, who actually very simple but very thorough and complete manner that human life and civilization begins when we accept higher principles, the higher principles of spirituality. And Srila Prabhupada explains how <clears throat> without what we call Brahminical culture, because Brahmanas traditionally, their primary role is to cultivate knowledge and to distribute, to distribute freely Brahminical culture which is so essential to society. <clears throat> it is not possible to sustain without cows. Vaisheshika Prabhu made that point very nicely that actually from the nectarine product of mother cow, and he, uh, jagya is possible. Prabhupada won't explain, once explained, when we cook, if we don't use ghee, that food is not considered cooked. <laughs> Actual cooked food is with ghee. <clears throat> Within our ISKCON society, some years back, we established a ministry specifically for promoting the culture, you know, the, the, the Vedic culture. We also have, of course, ministries, a global ministry for cow protection in agriculture. We have a national ministry in India for cow protection as well. I just like to, 
touch on something very fundamental that will be introduced a little bit later on this morning. This morning we are having a launch of a <clears throat> our mobile app called Sri Surabi. We're also having the launching of a book, a new book called Modernity is Killing Civilization. The core idea and principle in that book, which is part of research that I'm undertaking right now in the context of Vedic sociology, is a statement made by the great statesman Bhishma Dev. We find this in the Mahabharata. His statement is referring to three natural gifts of nature. Three natural gifts of nature that if properly handled, if properly respected, if properly utilized, can bring uh, harmony, peace, and prosperity in society. He was explaining this, actually, he was on his bed of arrows and speaking to Yudhisthira Maharaj, who was being enthroned as the new world emperor. <clears throat> and Yudhis uh, Bhishma Dev was explaining that the three gifts of nature, and I mentioned them by the order he has given them. One, cows. Secondly, land. And third, knowledge. <clears throat> In the Vedic culture, these three natural gifts are intimately connected. And if they are properly understood, properly utilized, and not as we have today, a situation where they are totally exploited, totally misused, totally abused, uh, then society will actually be peaceful and be able to prosper. As mentioned again a little earlier, we all know very well how our present world situation is in a very serious and uh, precarious condition. <clears throat> Many of us actually, we have some idea, but we can't really phantom how dangerous a situation we have created because of this misuse, especially, of these three gifts of nature. So therefore, uh, some years back, the United Nations made an appeal to what is called faith based organizations, FBOs, they call them, faith-based organizations. ISKCON is one such faith-based organization. And in as much as all faith-based organizations have a dual purpose, dual responsibility, similar actually to governments, uh, we're fortunate today, actually, in that we have sannyasis, some sannyasis and, and, and devotees from ISKCON society and, of course, many uh, followers. We also have congregational members. We have also our member of parliament, Dr. Swami. There, for this to be restored, for these three gifts, natural gifts of nature to be restored, and, it's, and it beginning with Mother Cow, there is a very urgent need for these two levels of leadership in society. People who are ministers in governments, whether it's in India or anywhere around the world, and those who are religious minded, and especially in, in the context of cows, the responsibility especially lies upon India. As India is, we know, meant to be giving, facilitating, introducing and spreading 
this Vedic culture. And in terms of faith-based organizations, especially the responsibility is on ISKCON society in that if we look in the last so many years since the inception of ISKCON some 52 years back, in his wisdom and his vision also, Srila Prabhupada began to establish, isn't it, New Vrindavan, the first community, way back in possibly 1968. I've been traveling around the world, different countries, different communities. My area of interest and specialization, especially our farm communities. And I'll just end on this point here. Villages are intimately related and connected with cow protection. The motto of our campaign, we started this Om Sri Surabhi campaign three years ago, actually. And the motto of our campaign is save our cows, save our villages, and save our culture. They're all intimately, closely connected together. Part of what I'm researching right now involves visiting 108 villages in India. The first village I visited, I came to know that there are 400 widows in that village. Do you know the reason? Because one of the major problems in that village and many other villages is addiction to alcohol. 400 husbands have died or committed suicide. The second village this is like two weeks ago, in the last couple of weeks. I'm just beginning this particular research. The second village, part of the research is to meet the head of the village and to meet five of the local leaders. One of the local leaders, as we were discussing, he mentioned that actually in our village, young boys of 12 years old become men because they start drinking alcohol. Everyone in the village. That was his statement. These are only small examples of so many anomalies and such a very difficult condition, so social condition, and largely because we have been disconnected with the basic understanding, basic con concepts of dharma that begin, as I mentioned a little earlier, with the need to protect mother cow or mother surabi. We started this 12-year campaign to primarily try and bring awareness to as many people as possible, beginning with our own members and devotees of ISKCON as well as others around the world. Our humble appeal and request uh, <clears throat> kindly uh, be in contact with devotees who are involved, especially in developing this particular aspect. Our founder, Charya Srila Prabhupada, was very uh, <clears throat> vocal, we could say, in very often underlining the importance of importance of introducing uh, this whole dimension of agrarian lifestyle because actually Vedic culture is an agrarian, primarily agrarian culture. And in as much when we speak of Sanatan Dharma, in as much as our spiritual identity and spiritual activity is to be engaged in the service of the Lord. On the material level, there is also uh, principles and concepts which are meant to be unchanging in how we live, how we conduct our, our lives, and how we relate especially with the mm, natural resources of nature and especially how we respect all living entities, not only human beings, but also 
all types of animals, but especially of all the animals, that animal, and it's the only animal in the mode of goodness, are cows. So once again, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for taking the time to come and to participate in this conference. And uh, we wish everyone uh, to become more involved according to your individual capacities. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it.